Ezekiel chapter 1, if I have a voice, may the Lord give me a voice. And we're in no rush. Because we're going to learn a lot of things in Ezekiel. And I advise you to go back to our Jeremiah study to see where the state of America is in. Ezekiel 1.15 And not all the Bible I know. I cannot explain what's happening here. Now as Ezekiel, in the last study, yeah, he's talking about these creatures, these creatures that John speaks about. John calls them beasts. Ezekiel calls them creatures. Ezekiel tells us that these creatures are attached to each other. But we don't see that in John's book that he writes for us through the Lord Jesus Christ, the book of Re Revelation. But they match, except for one is a, a calf and one is an ox. And later on we'll find out it's a cherub. And as we study this, we're going to get into the realm of Satan. We're going to get all kinds of studies. So I'm looking forward to doing. So we're going to take the Bible and study it out through Ezekiel. Now as I beheld the living creatures and which began at verse 4 there's four of them. A man's face, face of an eagle, feet face of a calf or ox and a face of a eagle, man, ox it's a fourth one uh, lion And here's the living creatures. Behold one wheel upon the earth. What? Where did the wheel come from? Now let me say something to you. And this is somewhere in between Genesis 1-1 and I'm going to say Genesis 1-3 if you believe in the gap or if you don't believe in the gap. Somewhere before man, God made a cherub, we'll get to Ezekiel 28, Lord willing. That cherub is Lucifer. He says, the cherub that thou created, these beings were created before time ever started. And there were five of them. We're not looking at that right. We're looking at the wheel. So man in his vast education of nothing. They will show you a caveman working on a piece of stone to make a wheel. And that the caveman developed the wheel. No. God did long before. I'm going to say Genesis 1-2. Whether you believe the gap or don't believe the gap. There's a time before time began that there were creatures on, before, near, above the throne of God. And there's a wheel. Because we're not going to get to it tonight. But we're going to show that these creatures are actually transporting God in his throne and we don't see this in Revelation behold one wheel upon the earth so one of the wheels is touching the earth by that means next to the living creatures which with his four faces all right we're talking about the same creatures now with these creatures there's a wheel
You gotta know this because when you get to heaven, ah! how come you didn't know when you read your Bible? You know how many Christians are gonna go to heaven? You know, I'm gonna have my coon dog, we're gonna have fried chicken. Ah! What is that? That's Satan. He's in heaven? <laughs> yeah, to Revelation chapter 12. You didn't read your Bible? Your church did not teach it? This is a, the Bible says, study and show thyself proved unto God. Why? Because when we get to heaven, there's a test. Four faces. Lion, eagle, man, and ox. The fifth one, the dinosaur, the fish, the dragon, the reptile, is gone. The appearance of the wheel. Okay, let's look at what the wheels look like. And their work. And their work would be the description, how they are made. Was like the color. I like that spelling better than without the U. And if you want to look that word up, you just got to take the U out. A barrel. Now, a barrel is a greenish blue with some white and cream. I see one description described as an aqua kind of green. Because that's interesting. Because uh, take your Bible, and go to Revelation, and we're going to run to Revelation a lot. Revelation chapter four: a greenish blue wheel. And he that sat, well, verse 2, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. We'll see that tomorrow night, Lord willing. And one that sat on the throne, he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone. That's not the fish. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, a round rainbow. Roundabout is a round rainbow in sight like unto an emerald. You know what color an emerald is? Go ask Dorothy. When she sought the Wizard of Oz, don't go to a wizard, go to God. So, we haven't get far. We're not going to get far in, in Ezekiel. So, the color of barrel would also match, I'm not saying is, but there's a green rainbow in heaven. And there's these green wheels. There's a round rainbow in heaven. And there are round wheels. And they're both green. And they, for the beasts, or the creatures, had one likeness. And their likeness was everything like each other, except they had four faces. Their bodies were the same, their legs were the same, without knees. So they can't bend down. That's why I preach and I have a message, and I'm not so teaching it, that I want to see if there's anywhere in the Bible where I am wrong. Satan can't bow down before God if he ain't got no knees. You find the four and twenty-four elders bowing down, but not the beast. Their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel. All right, now we're back at the wheel. In the middle of a wheel. Wait a minute, I didn't get the first wheel. And a description I would get for you to look at would be like a 10 speed 10 speed bike the back you got the black tire and then you got the, the silver uh, frame or you had the, the the cluster of gears your car has a black tire with a metal rim that's a wheel within a wheel 
So inside the wheel is a wheel. Woohoo, that helps a lot. And it's green. And it's attached to these creatures. John does not tell us anything like this. And one would think, because when John tells us the, the book of Revelation, they're not on the earth. Ezekiel's saying, hey, this thing's on the earth. God's like, let's get going. The world would call this a UFO. And no, this is not going to be like the second advent, because Jesus Christ doesn't come on a a wheels, he comes on a horse. And Christians follow on asses or horses. When they went, they went upon their four sides. And they turned not when they went. Now if you look at verse 9, the wings joined one to another and they turned not when they went. The the creatures and the wheels don't turn. Walk straight down the road and then make a right hand turn without turning. Alright, if you go straight, at, and I don't know how these creatures are, and it's laid out, the left and right, but if you were to go straight as a lion, go straight, and then make a right hand turn and the man's face now goes right. Okay, I got that. I understand that. But you got wheels that don't turn to turning. It's not a steering wheel. Now that's where you're going to get. You're going down the road and you turn right on the street, but your wheels don't turn. But you end up going right. Huh? I don't understand all this. When they went, they went upon the four sides. And they turned not when they went. They were stable. They weren't going to topple over. As for their rings, oh no, what? They were so high that they were dreadful. Would this also be the rings that the Catholic Church puts on the heads of their drawings? Like they put on their angels, the angels got wings and they don't in the Bible? Is this not the solar disk? Of the Babylonian and Egyptian religion. And yet these creatures have wheels and they have rings and the rings are high. And their rings were full of eyes round about them for Revelation chapter 4. So we're going to study it out. And verse 8. There's the creatures, verse 7. Lion, calf, man, and eagle. Verse 8. The four beasts, creatures, Ezekiel, had each of them six wings about him. They were full of eyes within. So there is some kind of change between Ezekiel's vision and John's vision. I don't think these are two total different creatures. I just think the location where you find these creatures. 
These creatures in Revelation, they're in heaven. Back to Ezekiel, they're on the earth. So here the rings have full of eyes. And when the living creatures are not dead, the wheels went by them. So these living creatures are mobile by wheels. Excuse me. When the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. So they're attached some way. And they can go up and down. You know all the times in the Bible going up and down? Moses went up Air, uh, not air, Mount Sinai, and he came down Mount Sinai. He went up Mount Sinai, he came down off Mount Sinai. Jesus went up on a mountain, he came down off a mountain. He took Peter and James and John up to a mountain, they came down off a mountain. They went up to Jerusalem, they came down from Jerusalem. Jesus went up to the Father in heaven, and he came back down. And was with the disciples. And then he Acts chapter 1, he went back up and sat at the right hand of the Father. We're going to be called up to heaven one day. And we're going to come back down from heaven one day. That's a lot of up and down. Something about that up and down. Whether the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was to go, they went. Oh, Christians don't do that. Jesus, go in the world and preach to God. I let my light shine. I don't tell anybody. And the Spirit speaks to us. And even myself, sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't. Then it was their spirit to go. So they are controlled by the spirit. And the wheels which lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So the Holy Spirit guided the creatures and the creatures guided the wheels. When those went, these went. I would assume when the creatures went, the wheels went. When those stood, these stood. I would have the creatures and the wheels. And in the wilderness, when the fire went, Israel went. And when the cloud abode, Israel bow. I'm going to tell you something. Though it's not recorded in the scriptures, I believe Moses, when he got the pattern for the tabernacle, I believe he walked before the throne of God as John did. I would believe that Moses seen these creatures these beasts that Ezekiel saw and that John saw. Because Moses tells us about a tabernacle and boy does God get into that tabernacle. How many times does God lay out that tabernacle in the book of Exodus? It's like, okay God, I got it. The material. The setting up the material, the making of the material, and the sent Lord, I got it. And you talk more about that than you did the birthday of Jesus. Why? All right, let's look at the Christian point of view. Moses went up, saw heaven, saw the layout, and God told him to lay out. 
And when Moses would do that, he would have saw those creatures. I'm surprised he didn't give God a hard time about going down. Paul gave God a hard time. But Ezekiel doesn't go to heaven. He sees the creatures. And yet later on in the book of Ezekiel, we're going to see Ezekiel telling us what the millennial temple is going to look like. And that millennial temple is set off in the pattern that is set in heaven where Moses got. Where John the apostle goes into glory and sees the beast and the ark <laughs> And the incense altar and all that's in heaven. And so will we as Christians. Now you want another oddball thing I can't prove in the scriptures? The Bible tells us that Solomon got the pattern from the temple from his father David. Where did David get that pattern? Did David go into glory? Unrecorded? Of his vast wilderness experience with King Saul? Is that up and down? Up and down. There's a lot to teach the Christians about the Bible instead of you know, the, the basics. So, 21, when those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. I flew the creatures and the wheel. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Over against them. The wheels were next to the beast. For the spirit, the living creature, was in the wheels. That's repeated from, from verse 20. That's important. That when something is repeated by God, it's important. Uh-oh. The likeness of the firmament. Firmament something hard. You find it in Genesis chapter 1. There's a firmament. It's a hardness. See the word firm? Upon their heads of the living creature. Something is hard above their head. Israel was hard in the neck. Christians are hard in the heart. Was as the color of terrible crystal. Are you ready? Revelation chapter 4. How can people say the Bible is boring? And let's work, let's look at verse five because verse five excites me. And out of the throne, okay, throne of God, proceeds lightnings and thunders and voices. That's going to be great to see. And there were seven lamps. Remember the lamps we talked about last night. Now we went to Revelation chapter one, but there's those lamps burning before the throne. I bet you would find in the Bible that there's seven points in the Bible where there are seven lamps burning. One of them I showed you the other day was Abraham. Which are the seven spirits of God. Didn't we just see spirit? Was there not a description as they were the likeness of coal that was on fire? And before the throne, which we'll talk about, Lord willing, tomorrow night, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal ice. The midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and there they are. The lion, the calf, the man, and the eagle. And the four beasts had six wings. There they are. 
back to Ezekiel. There's just no tires or wheels. I bet you the modern Bible say tires. So the likeness of the creatures and their parent. Oh, wait a minute. Where are we? So, verse 23, under the firmament, no, verse 22, and the likeness of the firmament upon their heads of the living creatures was as the color of terrible crystals, we just read that, ice, clear, clear. Stretch over their heads above. And we will get into that firmament tomorrow night, Lord willing. You know why NASA can't get to God's throne? There's a big firm of ice, of crystal. Do you know what the Roman mythology is? I studied it. I was into that. Zeus, and I forgot who his wife was, of all the multiple wives they have, and all the gods <clears throat> in the Roman he heaven, I forget what they called it. It was Mount something. And where the gods are, there's a little pool of water. And the gods would see what's going on in the earth when they moved the water a little bit. And then they were able to see what they wanted to see, what was going on in the earth. Mythology, fallen gods and religions come from the Bible. Because the author of mythology and religion is Satan and he knows the scriptures. Satan knows the scriptures more than any man knows the scriptures. And we're going to be running verses with verses to verses to verses. As we studied Ezekiel to show you. Wow. And I'm going to show you errors in the church. I'm going to show you revelations. And somebody wouldn't even read the book of Ezekiel and be like, wow. That's my favorite book, Revelation." I didn't know that was in that book of the Bible. Why? Well, I don't read it. Well, oh, how I love Jesus. Verse 23, And under the firmament were their wings straight. Now here's the description of wings again. Only winged creatures in heaven are these creatures or the beast, never angels. Never. I know they try to put wings on a man and fly. I know they try to put wings on a lion and call it a griffin. I know they try to put wings on an eagle that he's flying. Well, you say, what about the ox? You ever hear of buffalo wings? Buffaloes don't have wings. But when you're stealing from God in the Bible, and it's not even a buffalo, it's a chicken. You're so stupid, you don't even know what animal you're eating. That's almost stupid. As, oh, from purple, from sea to shining sea. Stupid. It's an ocean. It's not a sea. All right. I gotta say, I gotta wake you people up because you're dumb. You know what's wrong with some preachers today? They don't tell the congregation you're dumb. Oh, offended me. I don't care. So, one toward the other, everyone had two which covered his side, and everyone had two, which covered on that side their bodies. Now John says they have six. 
when they went. John's creatures are not moving. These are. And when, when John says, that, when the beast say, come and see, it doesn't say they moved. You know, that's the only time the beasts break their words of holy, holy, holy. When they speak to John. Come and see. And when I when they went, they're moving. I heard the noise of their wings. I wonder if Catholic angel wings make noise. I know they do. Catholic winged angels make a noise. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. Like the noise of great waters. And you can Google, you can... I want a sound of a mighty rushing river water. You just sit back and close your eyes as you hear that. And that's what these wings sound like. Okay, ready? As the voice of the Almighty. Jehovah, God. What does God sound like? Google yourself, mighty great rushing waters. Play that out. 15, 20 or a minute. And just close your eyes. You are hearing the sounds of the wings. And you are hearing the sound of God's voice. Did you know that? The voice of speech. As the noise of a host. Alright, you have to the, the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Here it is. What does it sound like when we finally get to heaven and we're all praising the Lord? We're all glorifying the Lord. It sounds like a mighty rushing river. And then, Ezekiel, when they stood, they, oh, wait a minute, Zeke, stop. I want to know more. How come God always stops us at the good part? You know, that's what God did to Paul. I believe when Paul was stoned, when he said, out of the body, I don't know, absent from the body, I don't know. I believe when, at that moment that Paul was stoned and died, I believe he went up to heaven. And imagine the horror when he came back to that broken, bruised body that had been stoned dead. He comes out of that body, he wakes up. <laughs> Wait a minute, Lord, I was enjoying myself. I believe that Paul many times tried to commit suicide. I want to go home. Uh, but <laughs> to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, hey, hey, but it's more needful for me to be here. Ah. Uh, and then with all that, the churches fought them, the Jews fought them, the Gentiles fought them. <laughs> wait a minute, we were just talking about the heavenly host, and then when they stood, wait, stop, Ezekiel. All right, where have you seen that before? Daniel, stop writing what you're writing. John, uh... You don't need to write that. There's Daniel. There's John. Can you imagine there were some things that Moses wanted to... Hey, Aaron, come on. Hey, everybody's sleeping in their tent. Let me tell you what... what man, you won't believe what... Uh, and then God's like, uh-uh. Get up, Moses. Oh, come on. Let me tell Joshua. Joshua didn't even go up. Well, let me... No. When they stood, they let down their wings. Okay. There was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. When they stood. Wait a minute. Come on. 
Ezekiel, what about that voice? We know it's God's voice. And had let down their weight. You already told that, Ezekiel. You said that when the mighty rushing of the voice of the heavenly host. Yeah, okay, when they stood, their wings went down. Oh, there came a voice. And then he repeats himself when they stood there. And yet you look at that statement. When they stood, they let down their wings. That's twice repeated. That's important. Now, what's the importance? I don't know. My mind wants to go back to, well, I want to hear what God had to say. But God would not be speaking to me. He's going to speak to Ezekiel to the people of Judah. And then the Babylonians and the Assyrians as we get into the book. So, we looked at last night the creatures. And we went to Revelation. And tonight we, we looked at the, the wheel. I want to say tire. The wheels. I don't know exactly. If they're flying beings with wings, why would they need wheels? And yet, our airplanes have wheels for landing. That's what we got for tonight.